Hello everyone and welcome on my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the best 10 Formula 1 driver of all time. I mean it's it's very hard to pick 10 drivers only. I've made a list. There are some more that I would like to add but I wanted to stick with 10. As always please give me your feedback, give me your ideas, your ranking, debate why or not I should have had some drivers or removed some drivers of that ranking. But here we go, top 10 drivers, Formula 1 drivers of all time. Before I go, I would like to say one thing. I've put 10, but I didn't list them in a ranking, right? So it's 10 drivers. Don't expect number 10 to be number one, number one to be number 10. I just put them here on a list. So the first one I want to talk about, and it's because I share a little bit of history with him is Niki Lauda. Obviously Niki Lauda, a very impressive driver. I have a picture sign of him at home. He had a massive accident at the Nürburgring, got burned in his car. I did get burned in Bahrain by accident, so obviously we share that. But huge respect for Nicky as a driver and then what he did with, uh, with Mercedes Formula 1 team. Obviously Nicky had, had his big accident in 76. Only six weeks after his accident, he was back racing. I believe he was back racing in Monza. And when he removed his balaclava, there was blood from, from the injury. Finished vice world champion that year, was world champion the year after. Absolutely stunning to see that he kept racing and came back so early after his accident. And then, you know, for me, the kids that red hat uh, all the time on created, well, hot creating Mercedes Formula One, the most successful team of all time. Nikki is three time world champion, 25 race win, one of the biggest mental strengths that um, I've seen in my career, and probably one of my favorite drivers of all time. Number nine, Sebastian Vettel, four time world champion, very impressive career. I remember watching Sebastian racing in Formula 3 when I was in Formula 1 and then I still remember watching his first Formula 1 race at the USGP uh, when Robert Kubica couldn't race because of his accident in Canada and um, honestly for a first race it was very very impressive you know he was part of the BMW junior program as well as Red Bull so he drove for BMW in the US jump in Indianapolis had a very good weekend setting up into going to Toro Rosso and, and then at Toro Rosso he won Monza on a, a very very wet weekend Obviously, Obviously the car was working very well, Sebastian Bordet, the French driver, was, uh, was with him at the front of the grid but had an issue at the start and just Sebastian flew, you know, flew on the race, he was just, just surfing the water. We still also then went to Red Bull for World Championship. Um, I was lucky to fight for podiums uh, and wins with him back in 2012 and 2013 and that was an amazing Then Sebastian went, went to Ferrari a little bit later and Ferrari was not uh, at his best. He did fight, he, he had a he gave Lewis Hamilton a tough time trying to win the championship against him. That was a pretty good, pretty good uh, battle to follow. For me, Sebastian is part of those uh, those top 10 drivers just because of what he achieved. So young, being so mature and so ready for Formula One. Next on the list is Stirling Moss. Even though Stirling Moss was never world champion, uh, he's got 16 wins and 24 podiums. He was um, he was overshadowed by uh, Juan Manuel Fonjo, and his nickname is the champion with no crown. Stirling Moss was was an absolute incredible driver, so fast, unlucky four-time vice champion in four years in a row three times behind Fangio. Such a gentleman, even Mercedes released a car at his name, a name, a car named after Sterling Moss. Yeah, just uh, an incredible driver, but uh, never was world champion. Next on the list is Jim Clark. Jim Clark is an absolute incredible driver. He's won 25 out of the 73 races he participated in, had to drop 28 times, was two-time world champion in 1963 and 1965. He even went rallying and actually was um, at the Great Britain Rally and he was super competitive. Uh, he was fighting there with the best rally drivers until he, uh, he drifted off the track. But that shows how, how much skill Jim Clark had. I mean, that, that record of 25 wins out of 73 races. That is absolutely incredible. Incredible driver that liked to drive Formula One rally car. Unfortunately, during a, a Formula Two race in 1968, he had an accident and, and passed away. But for me, I love the fact that um, he was driving wherever he could drive and that's, uh, that's so cool to see. Next on the list is uh, Jackie Stewart. Jackie is a Scottish driver, three-time world champion, 27 win, 43 podiums. He was one of the leader of Formula One in the late 60s, early 70s. Once uh, after the death of Jim Clark in 68, Jackie Stewart became the new British star of motorsport. 
Jackie Stewart raced 99 races, 43 podium, 27 win. Uh, he set a record that was then beaten by Alain Prost. But the crazy thing here is Jack Jackie Stewart only raced nine years in Formula One, was two-time world champion, two-time world vice world champion. That is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, talking to Jackie still nowadays, he's passionate about racing. He understands the, the racing. You know, he always wears that uh, Scottish trousers so you can see him from, from far. I was lucky to share some good experience with him. 2013 Malaysia on the grid. He came to me and he told me one thing. He said, slowly, slowly catch the monkey. And that meant just build your race and go for it at the end. I finished sixth that race, the, that worked. Jackie built his own team at the end of 1999. Uh, Stewart Racing, I don't know if you remember, it was a full white car with a Scottish flag on the side. I remember Barry Kiddo was driving for them and I can't remember who was, oh, Alan McNish, I think was there. Won one race, 99, and then that team became Jaguar, and then became Red Bull. So also one of the most successful team in history was built by uh, Jackie Stewart. He showed me some of the car. I went once to his property, show me some of the car that he kept uh, out there, and that was uh, pretty special. Next on the list, just talk about it, Anna Post, four-time world champion, 51 wins, 106 podium, the most successful French driver. Obviously, I know Alain very well. He's got 199 races in Formula 1, 106 podium, 51 wins. So very impressive stats. I started watching Alain in 93, 94. So I was young and Alain was fighting Elton Senna. Obviously, as a French driver, I was following Alain a lot. But Elton has something very unique. Elton was just Elton Senna. So it was hard to pick up one of the one of the two to be my favorite. Uh, Alain was, you know, very practical. The professor, that's his nickname, looking at all the elements and putting them together was I believe Ayrton was just more feeling based onto it. And uh, I mean, when they were teammates at McLaren, there was some fire. One of the biggest rivalry of, of Formula One it didn't go well all the time between Alain and, uh, and Ayrton. But uh, it was pretty pretty cool to uh, to see them racing that hard. Suzuka when they crashed as teammate at McLaren. And the year after, when they crashed again for the World Championship, it was two, uh, two finishing that uh, stayed in history. Alain then retired for a year, came back and won again. So so very impressive career from Alain, such an amazing driver to, uh, to get the chance to know. Next, Lewis Hamilton, seven-time world champion, one of the most successful driver, tie with Michael Schumacher. I won't go into the stats because Lewis is still racing, but if he's still gonna win some races, but also a driver that I've got the chance to compete in. For me, one of the most impressive powers, um, Lewis, when he came in 2007 with, uh, with McLaren, teammate with Fernando Alonso, and every, everyone thought rightly so that Fernando was going, you know, after being world champion of Zono, was going to be the one that, um, that was uh, going to dominate the rookie. And straight away from the first start in Australia, you could see that uh, Lewis was, was up there on the pace, being super, you know, intelligent and fast, and almost was world champion there if it wasn't for uh, if it wasn't for a mistake in China at the pit entry or, or some more, but obviously some other races where we could have scored points, but a uh, very, very impressive first season. That year, Kimi Raikkonen was world champion and they, 2008, Lewis won his first world title and then went to Mercedes when McLaren was still at the top. So everyone was thinking, why is he going to Mercedes and what's going to happen? And uh, what, a, what a run at Mercedes. Uh, as I say, Mercedes Formula One is the most successful team in the history of Formula One. Lewis is the most successful driver uh, with Michael Schumacher. Uh, he's got the opportunity to become the first eight-time world champion. Uh, it was very close in 2021. You can still debate that it should have happened. Very impressive to, uh, to see that career. So uh, definitely um, a, huge, uh, a huge champion there. So seven-time world champion, Michael Schumacher, incredible driver. I grew up watching Michael and Ferrari. He joined the team when they weren't at the best, but with Jean Todt and Ross Brown, they did manage to turn that around and, and be one of the most incredible uh, team of the history. For me, Michael Schumacher, it's the battle with Juan Pablo Montoya and the one with Fernando Alonso. It was so cool to see, obviously, every, pretty much every kid in the world grow up with a red car and red means Ferrari. So those Ferrari was, was, were absolutely uh, incredible. I also remember Mika Haikinen and Schumacher. So yeah, it was Mika Haikinen Schumacher and Montoya Schumacher and Alonso Schumacher. I was lucky to race against uh, Schumacher back in 2012. Uh, that was very special. You know, being, uh, being on the same track as him and, and uh, passing and, and being passed by uh, by Michael, that was very unique. Definitely something that um, that I was lucky to to have in my career. We have also to remember that before going to Ferrari, actually Michael Schumacher went to Jordan 
and his first weekend was the Belgium Grand Prix. He was absolutely stunning there. And then with Benetton, he was two-time world champion already, fighting with, with Ayrton. So yeah, I mean, if you look at it, Schumacher was Ayrton, Akinen, Montoya, Alonso. Then I got the chance to race him. That's absolutely incredible to think of that. I'm, I'm not good at looking back and looking at those stats, but uh, no, I know it because we're doing the video together and uh, I'm quite excited about it. No, obviously, Ayrton Senna, three-time world champion, 41 wins, 80 podiums, drove for pretty much 10 years, 84, 94. If you look at the story of Ayrton, him driving on the rain in Monaco with a car that wasn't the best and just flying and, and being so good to almost lapping everyone in Monaco in the race and crashing at the end because he kind of lost the focus. Three-time world champion with McLaren, then went to with Williams to win a fourth world title and fourth race of the season is Imola 94, probably the worst weekend of F1 history with Roland Ratzenberger dying on, the, on Saturday in qualifying and uh, Sunday, 1st of May 94. Ayrton Senna passing away in the race. I was watching that race. I was only eight years old, but I still remember watching the race. I still remember not understanding what was going on. Um, I was with my dad on the sofa and I was watching and waiting and, and didn't know what was happening 28 years ago. I still remember what I was doing. For me, Ayrton was just absolutely incredible. He inspired so many drivers just by the way he raced, the way he was passionate about it. I love using his coat. If you're no longer for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. I think that's, uh, that's something that I, I take from him. And I like that mentality that when you're out there, you are there and you're going for it. You know, you're know, uh, you not taking no for an answer. That's definitely something that, uh, that Ayrton would do. For me, he's, he's, he's one of the best of all time. I wish I'd seen him more racing. I wish he was still here wearing his blue national hat uh, and his yellow, green and blue helmet. He had the most um, pole position 65 during 17 years, the record until Alain Post took it. But uh, he was just probably the fastest or one of the fastest drivers that was that ever raced car. Last on the list was one of the first world champion, Juan Manuel Fangio, Argentinian driver, five-time world champion with four different teams, Alfa Romeo, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Maserati when he was age 47. Uh, obviously, it was a different time in the 50s. He was four times in a row, 54 to 57. 24 victories in 51 races. That's almost 50% of the wins. And, and the rest of the time was pretty much second. So he was he's like the godfather of all the racing drivers in the world, five-time world champion in an area where it was just so dangerous, so unpredictable, so much different, so much different. But as uh, one of the first world champions of Formula One, 70 years later, we still remember Juan Manuel Fangio as, as the guy that uh, that started it all for us. Obviously, it's a, it's a bit older history, so I'm, I'm well, I, I know it a little bit less uh, just because I wasn't kind of watching. But for me, he's, he's on the list of the 10 guys that, that are up there. Absolutely, absolutely stunning, absolutely impressive. Love the fact that, uh, yeah, he's, he's the oldest world champion of all time at 47. Can you believe that? And uh, almost a 50% rate of winning. Just absolutely amazing. There are more drivers that I like to put here. Fernando Alonso is one. I talked about it. I was lucky to be his teammate. Absolutely uh, impressive, but Fernando, it's not done yet. It keeps going and he goes like he's 20. There's Max Verstappen, but still same thing. Max Verstappen is only 24 years old, so I'm going to give him a few more world championship. And then we add him in the list. Graham Hill is, is one too. Uh, Graham Hill was, um, is one of the only drivers, if not the only driver. He's the only driver with the triple crown, meaning Monaco GP, 24 of Le Mans and Indy 500. A lot of drivers tried those triple crown, but uh, only Graham Hill was, was able to get it. So yeah, at least going to probably move, evolve, Involved. It's, it's just gonna get bigger because it's impossible with the time to to keep to 10 but uh, we'll do a new one in uh, in some time so please as always make sure that you like you subscribe you give me a comment you give me your list why the pro and the cons who should I uh, who maybe should I've had or removed I don't think there's any to remove but let me know if there are any uh, but who we should add and uh, I'll see you very soon for a new video